This video was made possible by Wix. If you are ready to create a website, head over to wix.com slash go slash infographics to try out one of their premium plans right now. In 1950, experienced mountaineer and skier Jim Carter was on a mountain climbing expedition with 20 other people when he mysteriously disappeared. A search of the area by volunteers would later discover Carter's out-of-control ski tracks, which seemed to suggest the missing man had been frantically careening down steep embankments and hurtling across crevasses as if fleeing for his life from something in the wilderness. Welcome to a special episode of the Infographic Show's Greatest Mysteries, Most Terrifying Bigfoot Encounters. Bigfoot, the abominable snowman, Yoey. From America to Tibet and even Australia, no matter where you go in the world, you're sure to find someone who has seen and believes in large, hairy, man-like creatures that live in the deepest wildernesses. Often described as intelligent, powerful, and generally shy and disinterested in humans, Bigfoot sightings are typically brief and end with the creature lurking away back into the wilderness, but also described as standing well over 8 feet tall and able to pick up boulders with ease, what happens when Bigfoot isn't so shy about being accidentally discovered by human eyewitnesses? Today we'll find out as we look into the top 3 most terrifying Bigfoot encounters ever reported. At number 3 is the Jim Carter disappearance in Ape Canyon, Washington. Jim Carter's disappearance in the winter of 1950 sparked national interest. A very experienced mountaineer and skier both, Carter had scaled the peaks of the Rockies and on this trip had just climbed to the top of Mount St. Helens with his 20-man group. As the group descended, Carter told the other climbers that he would ski around to the left of their descent path and take a picture of the group as they made their way down to the timberline below. Carter never returned from that detour, and a search of the area discovered a discarded film box where it's assumed Carter took his photo. Next to the film box were Carter's ski tracks, described by the expert skiers of his group as a wild, death-defying dash, and that Carter was taking chances that no skier of his caliber would take unless something was terribly wrong or he was being pursued. Carter's tracks showed that he had, in desperation, jumped over several large crevasses, and when the tracks led to the steep sides of Ape Canyon, the searchers were amazed to see that Carter had been in such a hurry that he had descended directly down the steep sides of the canyon walls. Yet a 75-person search party combing the area for five days never discovered his body nor a trace of equipment. But what did Jim Carter's disappearance have to do with Bigfoot? In the 20 years prior to the Carter disappearance, 25 different groups reported attacks by hostile, ape-like creatures in the area, including a troop of Boy Scouts who, after being chased by a large ape-like creature, were hysterical with fear. Locals remained convinced that Jim Carter had been attacked and pursued by a tribe of Bigfoot long known to inhabit the area and who were extremely aggressive against interloping humans. Perhaps they were so convinced because the name Ape Canyon came directly from our next terrifying encounter occurring just 26 years prior to Carter's disappearance. At number 2 is the Fred Beck and Roy Smith Night Siege of Ape Canyon in 1924. Prospecting for gold and looking to strike a claim, prospectors Fred Beck, Roy Smith, and three friends were working off a branch of the Lewis River when they discovered a set of massive, human-like footprints embedded deep in the earth. Shortly after their discovery, the men began to see a huge, hulking, gorilla-like creature through the trees on at least four separate occasions. Spooked by the beast that seemed to be stalking the group's every move, one of the prospectors took a shot at it to try and scare it off, but it seemed to only embolden the creature. A few days later, on the morning of July 10th, Beck spotted the creature near the edge of the canyon and took a shot at it, scoring a direct hit that sent the creature falling over the ledge and plummeting 400 feet to the canyon below. With the terrain too difficult to attempt a recovery of the body, the prospectors returned to their work before settling into their cabin that night. Later that evening, the group was awakened by a violent pounding on the roof and walls of their cabin. Rocks were thrown against the walls and through the windows, one striking and knocking Beck unconscious. The terrified men fired wildly into the night, trying to drive a dozen or more large, hulking creatures away. The fight lasted through the night, and it was only with daybreak that the creatures broke off their attack and retreated into the wilderness, giving an opportunity for the group to flee, leaving behind all of their expensive equipment. 
After news of the attack broke, the area immediately became known as Ape Canyon, and Native Americans living in the area suggested that the men had angered a tribe of seven to eight foot tall wild men known as the Siatic. According to the natives, the tribe was generally extremely shy and rarely seen, but would exact great vengeance on anyone who killed one of their members. Finally, at number one is the terrorizing of a family at Honobia, Oklahoma. In mid-January 2000, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, or BFRO, received an urgent message from a man who said that his brother and his family desperately needed help as they were being terrorized by what they believed were several Bigfoot. According to the father of the family, identified only as Mike, Shortly after buying the property in the remote wilderness of Oklahoma, they began to hear rustling directly outside the home late at night, and they would find large, 18-inch human-like tracks. The area was rich with deer, and Mike and his brother would hunt the deer on the property and store meat in an outdoor freezer. One morning, they discovered the door to the freezer shed ripped off its hinges, and the freezer completely emptied of three dressed deer. Shortly after that, the family began to hear loud bangs on the front door and sides of the house at night. The harassment continued for months, until finally Mike and his brother started taking turns staying up to keep guard armed with rifles. The Bifro initially set up a series of phone interviews, only to have one interrupted by a loud commotion from outside, barking dogs, and the sound of gunfire as Mike fired at a suspected Bigfoot that had strayed too close. From there, the incidents only became worse, with at one point an alleged Bigfoot smashing at the front door and tearing part of a window loose. In subsequent nights, the family was subjected to terrible high-pitched screams and deep roars as rocks were thrown through their windows and the door and walls were beaten on. Mike became so worried for his family that he sent them away, warning the Bifro that he was no longer wanting to scare the beasts away, but officially shooting to kill. Upon dispatching an investigator, they discovered that a possible reason for the hostility from the Bigfoots was the fact that the deer population was so massive that Mike and his brother often hunted directly from their back porch. Wounded deer would sometimes flee, and as postulated by the Bifro investigator, the Bigfoots waiting in the woods would chase the wounded deer down for an easy kill. This also explained why the Bigfoots were not being scared off by the gunfire. They had come to associate the sound of gunfire with wounded or dead deer. Not only did the family agree with the connection, as they had on occasion seen large, blackish figures dragging off wounded deer, but just two days before the arrival of the Bifro investigator, a deer wounded by Mike was discovered in the brush line with its neck broken and rear legs twisted off. Something had clawed a hole into the neck and scooped out the organs through the hole in order to eat them. The Bifro investigator concluded that after Mike had stopped putting deer meat in the outside freezer, the Bigfoots had started coming to the house trying to get inside. The investigator documented several pieces of physical evidence, including a bent steel gate that showed no scratches or paint flaking, indicative of a mechanical device being used to hoax the evidence. Warned to stop hunting the deer on the property so as to stop providing an easy meal for the Bigfoots, Mike took the Beefro's advice and within weeks reported that the Bigfoots had seemed to move back into the wilderness, leaving the terrified family alone. Bigfoot is often described as peaceful, and though eyewitnesses and investigators have reported logs and boulders hurled at them, when investigating the site after the incident, it's discovered that the hurdled objects landed nowhere near them, as if the Bigfoot was simply trying to scare them away and not hurt them. Yet from the encounters listed here, it's clear that not all Bigfoots are as peaceful. While science still doubts the existence of a large bipedal ape in North America, Thousands of men and women across the continent have all been turned into terrified believers. And while we aren't believers in Bigfoot ourselves, what we do believe in is making a great website with Wix. Wix offers you true creative freedom when designing your website. It's an amazing platform for anybody, whether you're a complete beginner, a hobbyist, a business owner, somebody enjoying their retirement, a professional designer, or even a professional website builder. You will never have to worry if your website is safe and secure, or if it will go down because Bigfoot destroyed your computer. Wix does all the heavy lifting. Go to wix.com slash go slash infographics or click the link in the description and build the best website you can imagine. So, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Do you have a terrifying encounter to share? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called Places That Are Even More Strange Than The Bermuda Triangle. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.